Okay, more on our top story now. Of course, U.S. President Donald Trump delivering his State of the Union address. This time, maybe it was significant. Congress is now not exclusively controlled by his Republican Party. Let's uh, speak to political analyst Peter Matthews. Peter, first of all, an overall impression? Okay, let's try again. Peter, it's Adnan in the studio in Istanbul. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for joining us. Give us an overall impression of that State of the Union address from your point of view. I believe that it was President Trump was trying to reach out to Democrats and other people in the country that are not in his party, kind of like making it a bipartisan address, by calling for the, pursuing the common good uh, against politics of revenge, etc. But those are beautiful words. When it comes right down to it, he also took off the gloves and started attacking the Democrats for being you know, not involved with security, national security and the wall. He brought the wall up again and started demanding it once again. And he's not really willing to compromise on the wall and, and the, the funding of the government's coming up in about a week and a half. That's very important. So it's quite interesting how he had both a cooperative stance at the beginning, but also he stuck to his guns and stuck to his partisanship in a sense. And I think that's quite, uh, quite concerning. OK, well, let's pick up on the issue of the wall, because obviously he calls it a national crisis. His intelligence chiefs have never categorized that as a security issue for the United States. But Donald Trump has been going on about this so, for so long. This was his perfect platform. He again addressed the issue. Let's have a listen to it. Now is the time for Congress to show the world that America is committed to ending illegal immigration, and putting the ruthless coyotes, cartels, drug dealers, and human traffickers out of business. I have ordered another 3,750 troops to our southern border to prepare for this tremendous onslaught. This is a moral issue. The lawless state of our southern border is a threat to the safety, security, and financial well-being of all America. Peter, there's so many issues here. He always looks at it from the American point of view, and why wouldn't he? But some people say he should also address the situation in Central America that's creating these people trying to look for a better life in the United States. There's the fact-checking. He keeps talking about drug cartels, drug dealers. The DEA itself says that 90% of the heroin that comes from Mexico does indeed come through Mexico, comes through legal ports of entry. How is he continuing to go on about this and not be called out by people who are looking at the truth? He needs to be called out, and it's, he's pulling up a red herring to distract people from the real issue of the day and why people are coming here across the border, a few people at a time, undocumented because of the economic situation in Central America and in Mexico, which was encouraged by NAFTA in the free trade agreement, which, by the way, when he negotiated it again, it didn't really strengthen NAFTA make it better for workers or for the environment. He basically had a very tiny little reform recently. And he's not looking at the core issue of why people come here because of low-paying jobs over there, and the drugs are actually a manifestation of that kind of, of uh, neoliberalism which he's been pursuing. So I think Mr. Trump has to be more honest and straightforward about not only that, but Central America, where there are dictatorships that the U.S. has supported in the past. And those folks are, are being driven here for political asylum. And they have every right to cross our border and ask for political asylum. And President Trump should recognize international law and do that. He's instead going off the track by trying to distract people in that regard, the real problem of the issue of undocumented immigration. And I think he needs to really work on that and cooperate with Democrats. Democrat plan is quite balanced. They talk about addressing the needs of, you know, making sure there's enough humanitarian aid, as well as inspection teams and maybe more border patrol, but no physical barrier wall, a 2,000 mile long border wall, which would be counterproductive and hurt our relationships with Mexico and our image throughout the world and among our own people. State of the Union, always a good chance for any president to show off their achievements. He's talking about the American economy. He said, we've created 5.3 million new jobs and importantly added 600,000 new manufacturing jobs. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says, actually, it's not 5.3 million, it's 4.9 million. It's not actually 600,000 new manufacturing jobs, it's 436,000. Are these facts important? Because the economy is doing quite well under Donald Trump. 
Those facts are very important because the discrepancy there, and it goes to the truth of the matter. Is he being honest fully with, with the public when he says those things? Also, don't forget the workforce participation rate is actually quite low still. It's about 62.9%. Well, back about 10 years ago, before the recession, it was about 65%, almost 66%. So there are many, many people, 90 million Americans are not working right now who could work and who would, are looking for full-time jobs and not getting it. So he just needs to do a lot more massive investment in infrastructure, as he's been promising. He's never delivered infrastructure planning like he said he would do that, even when he had two years of Republican uh, dominance in Congress. He didn't deliver infrastructure. He didn't deliver the wall. So there's a lot of problems here. And the president, as most presidents do, but especially in this case, puts his best foot forward and ignores some of the weaknesses in the government and his policies that he has. Okay, well, he did say he would invest in the infrastructure of the future. But uh, for uh, the opposition Democratic Party, let's just uh, look at one more domestic issue and then we'll come on to a couple of international ones. Stacey Abrahams, the defeated gubernatorial candidate from Georgia in the November elections. Uh, she is the first black woman to deliver the opposition party's response. So lots of symbolism, apart from the fact that there were so many of those Democratic congresswomen wearing white jackets inside the chamber. Let's have a little listen to Stacey Abrams. Making livelihoods of our federal workers a pawn for political games is a disgrace. The shutdown was a stunt engineered by the president of the United States, one that defied every tenet of fairness and abandon not just our people, but our values. Under the current administration, far too many hardworking Americans are falling behind, living paycheck to paycheck, most without labor unions to protect them from even worse harm. The Republican tax bill rigged the system against working people. Rather than bringing back jobs, plants are closing, layoffs are looming, and wages struggle to keep pace with the actual cost of living. Pete, we've got just over a minute left. Let's look at the international situation. Donald Trump says that his foreign policy is based on principled realism. Is it principled realism when you uh, talk about Venezuela one way and support Saudi Arabia and Mohammed bin Salman in another? No, it's very inconsistent, and we need to be more consistent with American foreign policy based on the values of democracy and human rights and fairness and equity, realizing America first is not a good policy because that means other countries have to be last or second or third, whereas the United States should actually lead through example, through international cooperation and economic development, and to consider all nations to be equal in the world and respect them and work together in a collective security, in a cooperation. But Mr. Trump has this America first agenda he says other countries have to take the back seat, basically, and it's not a very good or conducive foreign policy. It's inconsistent as far as Venezuela and Saudi Arabia go, because that's, it's completely not a consistent policy, especially when the U.S. has been actually interfering in Venezuela and has not recognized that there was that kind of interference that had to help bring the economy down in Venezuela as well. It wasn't just the malfeasance of the socialist government. It was actually the economic policy of the United States under President Obama toward the end, but especially under President Trump. And we should, in fact, work to help the Venezuelan people and recognize legitimate governments that are in power and not seek to back coups that are counterproductive against the international order and, the, and basically democracy. Peter, you know, we always appreciate your analysis on TRT World. Thank you very much indeed. Peter Matthews speaking to us from Los Angeles.